For 50 years, the story we knew of the moon was a bit one-sided. The familiar, cratered face we all see, the one that hosted the legendary Apollo missions, was the only page we'd ever read up close. But the moon's biggest secrets, and maybe even the key to our future in space, were hiding on the far side. Then, in June of 2024, China's Chang'e 6 mission quietly returned to Earth, carrying a package that is rewriting what we thought we knew. What they brought back is more than just rock and dust, it's a treasure chest of geologic secrets that could redraw the map for a new era of energy and a permanent human presence beyond Earth. So what exactly did they uncover that's kickstarting the race for the Moon 2.0? And why is it making other space powers so nervous? The story of humans on the Moon began with thunderous rockets and grainy TV broadcasts. The Apollo missions were a massive triumph, a geopolitical statement that planted flags and footprints in the lunar dust. But every single one of those landings, from Apollo 11 to 17, touched down on the near side. It was the only side we could directly talk to, the only place we could safely guide a lander. The far side remained a mystery, a place known only from fleeting orbital glances. It's a fundamentally different world, more ancient, more heavily cratered and shielded from Earth's constant radio noise. For decades, that's where the story stood. China has launched an unprecedented mission to the far side of the moon. Then a new player entered the scene, not with a sprint, but with a methodical and incredibly ambitious marathon. China's National Space Administration, through its Chang'e program, began a step-by-step -step conquest of our celestial neighbor. This wasn't about repeating the past. It was about building the capability to go where no one had gone before. First, orbiters. Then, landers and rovers on the near side. And in 2019, with Chang'e 4, they did something monumental. A soft landing on the lunar far side. A feat only possible because they first parked a dedicated communication satellite in a special orbit beyond the moon. But the ultimate prize was bringing a piece of it home. Landing is one thing, returning with physical evidence is a whole other level of difficulty. That was the job for Chang'e 6. Its target, the South Pole Aitken Basin, or SPA, the single largest, deepest, and oldest impact crater on the moon. A colossal scar from the solar system's violent youth. Scientists have long theorized that the impact that created this basin over four billion years ago was so powerful it may have punched right through the moon's crust, churning up material from the lunar mantle. Getting a piece of that mantle would be like finding the moon's geologic Rosetta Stone. In June 2024, after a tense and complex automated mission, Chang'e 6 did it. It collected 1,935.3 grams of rock and soil, the first ever samples from the far side, and started its journey home. The world was about to find out what secrets the moon's hidden face had been keeping. China's Chang'e 6 lunar probe has returned to Earth, bringing with it samples from the unexplored far side of the moon. When the Chang'e 6 samples were finally opened, they began to tell a story that changes our view of the moon. These weren't just copies of the Apollo rocks. They were profoundly different, offering a direct window into the moon's chaotic past and its surprising geological life. First, the analysis provided the first direct evidence from the far side that has scientists buzzing. The rocks show the mantle beneath the SPA basin is extremely depleted in certain elements, which could mean the giant impact that formed the crater fundamentally changed the moon's internal chemistry. They also confirmed the water content in the far side mantle is much lower than the near side, revealing a major difference in how water is distributed across the moon. But the rocks held more surprises. Analysis revealed a far more dynamic and extended volcanic history on the far side than predicted. The samples point to at least two major volcanic periods, one around 4.2 billion years ago and a much younger one around 2.8 billion years ago. This discovery challenges the old belief that the far side was geologically dead while the near side continued to simmer. Even more startling was the discovery of a revived magnetic field. It was thought the moon's core, which generated its magnetic shield, died off billions of years ago. Yet, these samples suggest it experienced a surprising rebound around 2.8 billion years ago, a temporary reawakening deep inside the moon. This discovery forces scientists to rethink the moon's entire thermal history. And then there's the discovery that truly ignites the imagination, resources. The far side has been constantly blasted by the solar wind for billions of years. Among the particles it has absorbed is an isotope incredibly rare on Earth but abundant on the moon, helium-3. 
While Chang'e 6 hasn't released specific new data on helium-3, China's previous discovery of the new mineral Changesite Y, which contains helium-3, signals their intense interest. Helium-3 is considered by many to be a perfect fuel for nuclear fusion, a source of clean, safe, and nearly limitless energy. Estimates suggest just 25 tons of it could power the entire United States for a year, and the lunar surface may hold at least a million tons. With the new far-side samples, China isn't just doing science, they're prospecting. They are mapping out a future energy economy. The revelations from the Chang'e 6 samples aren't just for textbooks. They're actionable intelligence, a blueprint for the next phase of human expansion. The strange rocks from the far side help confirm that the moon isn't just a desolate rock. It could be a gas station, a construction yard, and a power plant all rolled into one. This is where science transforms into strategy. The most immediate game changer is the push for in situ resource utilization, or ISRU, basically, living off the land. For decades, the biggest hurdle to a permanent space presence has been the insane cost of launching everything from Earth. A single liter of water costs tens of thousands of dollars to ship to the moon. But what if you didn't have to? China's upcoming missions, Chang'e 7 and Chang'e 8, are designed to prospect for water ice at the lunar south pole and test the tech needed to use it. Water is the linchpin. You can drink it and grow plants with it. More importantly, you can split it into hydrogen and oxygen, the two main components of rocket fuel. Suddenly, the moon isn't just the destination. It's a refueling depot for missions to Mars and beyond. But you can't have a gas station without building it first. Chinese scientists have already developed tech to 3D print bricks using simulated lunar soil, powered by concentrated sunlight. The dream of building habitats and landing pads with local materials is no longer science fiction. It's a technology being actively developed. This brings us to the Grand Vision, the International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS, spearheaded by China and Russia and with over a dozen partner countries already signed on, the ILRS is a direct competitor to the US-led Artemis program. The roadmap is patient and phased. The first phase, running to 2035, focuses on establishing a basic robotic station near the South Pole, using the upcoming Chang'e missions to verify resources and test these living off the land technologies. Phase two, from 2036 to 2045, is where the plan kicks into high gear with a comprehensive, expandable facility. To power this lunar settlement, China and Russia have announced plans to jointly build a nuclear power plant on the moon, aiming for it to be operational by the mid-2030s. A lunar nuclear reactor provides the kind of consistent, heavy-duty power that solar, with its two-week-long nights, just can't match. It's the kind of power you need for large-scale mining, refining metals, and producing rocket fuel. China hasn't just landed on the far side, they've returned with a business plan. This new era of space exploration is unfolding faster than ever. If you want to stay ahead of the curve on the technologies and the geopolitical shifts shaping our future beyond Earth, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. You won't want to miss what happens next. What we're seeing is a fundamental shift. The first space race was for prestige, for flags and footprints driven by Cold War ideology. This new space race, ignited by the secrets unlocked from the far side, is different. It's a race for position, for resources, and for control of the strategic high ground of the 21st century. The 1,935.3 grams of rock and dust brought back by Chang'e 6 are more than a scientific curiosity. They are a declaration of intent. They represent a strategic move that has validated the roadmap for the industrialization of the moon. The nation that masters lunar resources, that can mine helium-3 to power Earth, extract water to fuel the solar system, and use local materials to build a permanent off-world presence will hold a decisive advantage. As Ouyang Ziyuan, a chief scientist of China's lunar program once said, whoever first conquers the moon will benefit first. China's methodical decades-long lunar program is now paying off, putting them in an incredibly strong position. While other nations plan their return to the moon, China is demonstrating a uniquely integrated long-term vision, connecting scientific discovery directly to resource utilization and infrastructure. The International Lunar Research Station isn't just a slide in a presentation, it's a project whose foundational missions are launching in the coming years. The quiet landing on the far side and the safe return of its precious cargo wasn't just another mission, it was the starting gun for the lunar gold rush. 
It marks the moment the moon transitions from a symbol in the night sky to a tangible asset, a new continent of opportunity. The secrets held in those strange lunar samples have been revealed, and in doing so, they have shown us that the future is no longer a distant dream. It's being built right now, one lunar brick at a time.